Hello everyone, welcome back to This Is Why We Stand. My name is Joe Archino and I was inspired to make this series to accurately convey the true meaning of the American flag and why the American flag should always be honored and respected. And as you know, every episode we always go over and we look at the story of one of our service members because that really is where the true heart of the American flag lies. And today we're going to talk, to talk about Sergeant Fred William Stockham. And I think I think this is a very, very interesting story. It's not a long one, but I think really it's an incredible testament to the man that he was. And it is very interesting because we don't know a great deal about the life of Stockham, but we know everything that we need to know about him from his story and the man that he was. Now, just to kind of give you a little bit of a preface to him, he was in the United States Marine Corps. He had been in there since 1903, and uh, he did find action in in World War One, He were largely was a career military man, but in 1918, Stockham was in France with the rest of the United States military, trying to bring World War One to a close, and where his story starts is on the morning of June 13th, and really where we're going to center the story is on Bella Wood, and Bella Wood was a really contested area throughout World War I, but the U.S. Marines' large objective was to clear the Germans out of Bella Wood. Starting on the morning of June 13th, the Germans began an artillery barrage on the Marine 6th Regiment. Stockham and the others were bombarded by explosives and gas shells for hours during the initial German bombardment, and I think really just to give everyone a little bit of a background on World War One. World War One really, I mean, more artil artillery killed more people than any other weapon during the First World War. You would just have both sides firing artillery at each other for days. I mean, millions upon millions of shells were fired at uh, at opposing sides throughout the First World War. And it's so interesting, and this really always is the case in war, is you always have all this new technology, and you have people who still don't fully understand at times the capabilities of this new technology. That's why during World War One you had the machine gun. You had explosive ordnance that could travel miles upon miles. I mean, you could set up your artillery miles behind enemy uh, behind your lines and fire them from a safe distance and it wreak havoc on the area you were trying to target. So you have all this new technology in World War One. You have all these people who still don't fully understand the capabilities of this technology. And I think when those two things meet up with each other, that's one of the reasons you see such a high body count in the First World War. One of those technologies was the use and deployment of poison gases. And the Germans, in addition to firing artillery ordnance, they would also put these poison gases in the shells and fire them on the enemy. Well, Stockham and the Marines in Bella Wood on the 13th of June 1918, the Germans did fire upon them gas shells as well. And gas was a particularly nasty weapon in the First World War. The, the gas was implemented by both sides, the Allies and the Germans, and it just created such havoc on the battlefield as it was. It was one of those things where, as as it became more and more common, almost every soldier was equipped with some type of gas mask, and the gas masks, they changed over the course of the war. They became more reliable. It, almost every soldier had one, but the effects of the chemical agents were just devastating. You could suffer blindness. There was one agent where it would fill your lungs with water so you would basically drown above land and I, I think that sounds as horrific as it is that you would, could be killed instantly. It could take you days sometimes to even know what your status was going to be. Mustard gas. I mean Chemical warfare started here in World War One, and it was a devastating thing. But the Americans obviously came to the war effort much later. The Br Britain and France, they had been in the war for a while. The Germans, they had been using these agents on each other. But the U.S., and obviously Sergeant Stockham, he was a sergeant. He was in charge of training soldiers. So he was very well aware of the effects of the gas and then the, the circumstances that it could create on the battlefield if used. But we're going back to his story now, now that I've provided a little bit of context. So the 
you have the Germans shooting these artillery shells, these poison gas shells at the Americans in the wood. Stockham and a lot of his men, uh, Stockham was kind of trying to keep order. He had a lot of men that were killed or wounded lying around. And in the chaos, Stockham noticed one of his soldiers lying wounded on the ground in the midst of a cloud of gas. And I think what happens next I can't do it justice. I'm going to read you his excerpt from his Medal of Honor. And I think this here says, I mean, if you needed to define William Stockham, this excerpt here is exactly that. And it is as follows. Stockham, upon noticing that the gas mask of a wounded comrade was shot away, without hesitation, removed his own gas mask and insisted upon giving it to the wounded man, well knowing that the effects of the gas would be fatal to himself. He continued with undaunted courage and valor to direct and assist in the evacuation of the wounded until he himself collapsed from the effects of gas dying as a result thereof a few days later. I think there, it's just so much to take in, but I mean, you really just can almost picture it in your mind. Stockham sees one of his men, he's lying wounded, he has no protection, the gas from the German attack is setting in, and he takes off his own gas mask. And again, I think They write it there in the Medal of Honor citation. He well knew what would happen once he took off his gas mask. He did. I mean, this is not a situation where he was just, he was not aware. He fully knew what he was getting himself into once he decided to take his gas mask off and give it to that soldier. He knew that his life was going to be over soon after that. And I I think the fact that he just miraculously continued to just do his job unfazed, not even thinking about all that that was going through his mind at the time, was saving his men, getting his men out of harm's way. And that really is such a profound thing. I mean, it's not, it really is outside the realm of normalcy. I mean, you just have to have such a selfless spirit about you. Because again, you know, I, I think it might be a little bit different if, Stockham just didn't know what was going to happen to him, but he fully did know. He was a sergeant. He knew he was in charge of his men. He knew the stake, what the stakes were going to be, and regardless of that, he still decided to take off his gas mask, give it to the soldier who was wounded on the ground, and then he paid the ultimate price just a few days later, but it really is a remarkable story. It just shows you, I mean, it's It's so sad the way that he fell on the battlefield, but the amount of honor that he fell with and just really, I mean, again, we don't know a ton about Sergeant Fred William Stockham, but we know everything that we ever need to know about him because he is a hero and the man that he was from this story. We stand for Sergeant Fred William Stockham and we fulfill our duty to him by remembering his name and his story forever. I want to thank everyone for listening to this episode of This Is Why We Stand and I will be back in the future very soon with another episode.